Can you guess which French landmark stands taller than the Eiffel Tower? Imagine walking on a bridge so high that it feels like you're floating in the sky with clouds below your feet. This incredible structure is the Millau Viaduct, an engineering marvel built in the Tarn Valley of southern France, standing at an impressive height of 343 meters, 43 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower. The bridge spans a length of 2.5 kilometers and rests on just seven pylons. The road deck is elevated 245 meters above the ground, making it a breathtaking yet challenging feat to maintain stability. The valley experiences wind speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour, is prone to landslides, and faces the constant threat of earthquakes, all of which makes the construction and stability of this bridge a remarkable achievement. In October 2001, when construction of the bridge began, the first major challenge was conducting a geotechnical investigation to ensure a strong and stable foundation for the towering pillars. You might remember our video on the underwater dam where we discussed geotechnical investigations. Let us focus on the foundation of pylon number two, the tallest pillar at 343 meters. To lay its foundation, the ground was excavated until the bedrock layer, a strong and stable base capable of supporting the immense weight of the pillar, was reached. After excavating to a depth of 15 meters, a strong layer of bedrock was discovered, providing a suitable base for the foundation. However, the foundation could not be built directly on this layer. It needed a firm grip with the bedrock. To achieve this, large diameter boreholes were drilled into the bedrock. Steel reinforcement bars were inserted into these boreholes, which were then filled with concrete. This process created four pile foundations, firmly anchoring the structure to the bedrock and ensuring stability. To construct the foundation, a prefabricated framework was designed, equipped with bracing for lateral support. This framework allowed the foundation to be built in segments, each measuring four meters in height. Inside the framework, a dense grid of steel reinforcement bars was arranged and filled with concrete. After allowing each segment to cure for one to two days, the framework was lifted, and the process was repeated by adding another reinforced structure and pouring concrete. The step-by-step -step method continued until the entire foundation was completed. Once the foundation was completed, construction of the main pylon began. To build the pylon, a self-climbing framework was employed. This innovative framework could ascend on its own, powered by hydraulic jacks, enabling efficient vertical construction. However, new challenges emerged as the height of the pylon increased. One major difficulty was the supply of concrete to the top. To address this, a tower crane was installed alongside the pylon. This crane played a crucial and critical role in transporting workers, equipment, and concrete to the higher levels of the structure. The pylon was constructed as a single shaft up to two-thirds of its height. Beyond this point, it was divided into two separate arms, requiring two distinct frameworks to continue construction. This design was implemented for several reasons. Firstly, to make the pylon aerodynamic, reducing the impact of high-speed winds. Secondly, to evenly distribute the load. Thirdly, for aesthetic appeal. And lastly, for a critical reason we will discuss later. At this stage, the engineers faced a second major challenge ensuring the pylon remained perfectly vertical at such a height. This was an incredibly difficult task, requiring millimeter-level precision. To achieve this, GPS technology was used. While the GPS in mobile phones offers accuracy within 5 to 10 meters, such tolerances are suitable for construction. Instead, specialized GPS systems capable of multimeter-level accuracy were employed. To achieve high precision, a GPS station was established on site to serve as an anchor point. This station acted as a reference point, continuously minimizing positional errors. The first step was determining the station's exact X, Y, and Z coordinates using GPS satellites. For clarity, think of the X, Y, and Z coordinates like the graphs we studied in school. On a graph moving two units along the z-axis and three units along the y-axis locates a point where these lines intersect. Similarly, the z-axis adds a third dimension, representing height. The GPS station was linked to satellites and monitored its position at regular intervals. 
It analyzed and corrected errors caused by environmental disturbances and variations in the Earth's orbit, ensuring accurate location data. A GPS device was installed at the top of the pylon, maintaining a continuous connection with both the satellite and the reference point on site. This device first determined its location via the satellite, then calculated the positional error by comparing it with the reference point. Using this data, the exact position of the pylon was established. This precise GPS tracking ensured that the pylon remained perfectly vertical as its height increased. Remarkably, when the pylon was completed, it deviated by only 2 to 3 millimeters from its intended axis, an ordinary feat of engineering. The bridge consists of a total of seven pylons, with pylon number two being the tallest. The heights of the other pylons vary due to the undulating terrain of the Tarn Valley. The next major challenge was constructing the road deck to connect these pylons. Traditional methods such as using concrete blocks for the road were impractical because no crane could lift such heavy loads to the required heights and precisely position them on the pylons. Engineers devised an innovative solution to overcome this challenge. Since the points on either side of the bridge were at ground level, they decided to construct the road segments on the ground and then push them incrementally to connect the pylons. However, another challenge arose. The distance between the pylons was approximately 350 meters. Concrete blocks would lack the required strength and flexibility to span such distances. To address this, the engineers opted for large steel sections known as steel decks. These steel segments would be fabricated to match the slight curvature of the road, making them both strong and adaptable. The contract for manufacturing the steel decks was awarded to Eiffel Steelworks, the same company that supplied steel for the Eiffel Tower. This company employed CNC plasma cutting technology, a highly precise method that cuts steel plates with exact measurements resembling the precision of lightning. The steel decks were fabricated as box-shaped structures with internal gaps reinforced by additional steel rods for support. Each deck section was 32 meters wide and 20 to 22 meters long. The construction process was straightforward. Individual steel boxes were welded together and pushed forward to form the road deck. This operation was carried out simultaneously from both ends of the bridge with the two sections eventually meeting at the center. To enable the movement of the deck, sliding mechanisms and bearings were installed on all the pylons, allowing the deck to glide forward smoothly. Additionally, large temporary steel towers were erected between the pylons to provide support as the deck transitioned from one pylon to the next. The powerful hydraulic system was installed at the starting point to lift and push the deck forward, you can see its working mechanism. The system's operation was complemented by a lightweight steel nose attached to the front of the deck. This nose would first reach the pylon and provide mechanical support to the rear section, ensuring stability throughout the process. Oh, what happened? The whole mechanism was working perfectly. One by one, the whole pylon collapsed. The reason behind this can be understood with a simple example. Imagine some items are placed on a table. If you stand on the floor and apply force to the item, the force will create tension in its legs, potentially causing it to break. However, if you sit on the table and apply force directly to the items, no tension will be created in the table. The same logic was applied to the bridge. By positioning the hydraulic system on the bridge itself and applying force to the steel box from above, no horizontal force was exerted on the pylon's foundations, maintaining their structural integrity. To implement this principle, a computer-controlled hydraulic system was installed on each pylon. To minimize friction during the lifting and sliding of the deck, the contact surfaces were coated with Teflon. This material commonly used in non-stick cookware prevents sticking due to its smooth and layered structure. The hydraulic system on each pylon worked in unison, pulling and pushing the deck forward while ensuring no horizontal force was applied to the pylons. The deck advanced at a slow but steady pace, moving only 600 millimeters every four minutes. As a result, it took three to four days for the decks to reach their final positions. This operation was highly sensitive to weather conditions. Strong winds could halt progress entirely. So we need clean weather conditions for this operation. 
Another significant challenge was the vast distance between the pylons, which made it essential to provide additional support for the deck in the middle. Without this support, the deck would not be able to balance the load effectively. To address this, large steel pylon caps were constructed, each standing 90 meters high and weighing 700 tons. These caps were connected to the deck using sturdy cables, which provided crucial mid-span support, ensuring the stability and load distribution of the structure. Finally, on May 28, 2004, the decks from both sides of the bridge met at the center and were connected. Remarkably, when the two sections aligned, there was a discrepancy of only one centimeter, with 99% of the structure matching perfectly. An extraordinary achievement in precision engineering. In total, the construction of the Milau Viaduct required 36,000 tons of steel and approximately 85,000 cubic meters of concrete, highlighting the immense scale of this engineering marvel. Once the deck was set, the road surface was constructed, and the cables were tightened to provide additional support. These cables were uniquely designed. While they appear as single ropes from the outside, they are actually composed of multiple bundled ropes, a clever engineering solution. The lifespan of these cables exceeds 120 years, but if any individual rope within a bundle becomes damaged, it can be replaced without significantly increasing the load on the remaining ropes. This design ensures easy maintenance and long-term reliability during the bridge's service life. With the bridge now complete, it must still contend with the ongoing challenges posed by nature. Designed to withstand high-speed winds and earthquakes, the structure also has to accommodate thermal expansion. During summer, the metal components of the bridge expand by 8 to 12 centimeters. To manage this, thermal expansion joints were installed on both sides of the bridge, allowing the structure to expand without causing damage. A critical concern, however, is the horizontal force exerted on the pylons during expansion. To address this, the deck is not permanently fixed to the pylons. Instead, sliding or low-friction bearings are installed on the pylons, allowing the bridge to expand freely while minimizing horizontal forces. In extreme conditions, if the temperature in the area rises to 40 degrees Celsius, the bridge can expand by more than one meter. To accommodate this, the Y-shaped design of the pylons plays a crucial role in protecting the structure from breaking. Think of it like splitting a piece of wood in the middle. Applying horizontal force increases its tilt angle. Similarly, the Y-shaped design distributes forces more effectively, offering flexibility to withstand significant thermal expansion without damage. Despite these challenges, the Milau Viaduct stands tall as a masterpiece of engineering and a popular tourist destination today. I hope this explanation has helped you understand the construction of the Milau Viaduct from an engineering perspective. Your support is invaluable to us, and we encourage you to join our channel membership to help us continue producing such content. Thank you for watching.